we'll, we'll wait for not long. Fran and Christy. I'm not waiting for oh, Rob. Yeah, we better wait for Fran and Christy to get in here. They're up to get some papers or something. All right, let's get this show on the road. Yeah. Ready to rock? Okay. Uh, district, uh, Lunenburg Water District meeting, uh, April 14th, 2021. This, uh, be advised this meeting's being recorded for a rebroadcast on Lunenburg Public Access. Uh, let's see. Review and sign warrants. Went through all of that. We're so efficient, we got it already done. Uh, the chair would accept a motion for to approve the minutes of March 24th and March 27th. I make a motion to approve the minutes of March 24th and March 27th. So moved. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, would also accept a motion to reappoint the employees Superintendent Francis G. McNamara, Clerk Treasurer Christina Schwinger, Office Assistant Lisa Carlesco, Water Utility Operators Terry Truax, Rob Maloney, and Ethan Proctor. Uh, and I believe Council Richard W. Larkin. All right, I make a motion to. Uh, I can say so moved. Yeah, just so moved. moved. It's fine. Yeah. Okay, so moved. Second. Give Second. Me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Trying to remember uh, that, guys. The chair will accept a motion for reorganization of the Board of Water Commissioners. Are there any motions on the table? I make a motion that we approve Mark Bursch as chairman of the board indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> so move. Wow. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. That's in the minutes. Still two to one. It's in the minutes. Still two to one. All right. Uh, since we do have all parties here, we'll jump right to our 401. Five appointment or four ten appointment Retail meeting store. with Kevin O'Brien regarding Arrow Estates. I tell you, well, why don't we just well, wait just two minutes? See, Richard just drove in the yard. Okay, let's wait two minutes then, and why don't we jump to the next one real quick, discussing supplying of water to pool and irrigation companies. Okay, so we've had several people ask about landscape companies for the hydro cedars. Uh, pool companies looking for uh, water for their pool trucks to, to fill swimming pools. Uh, so I didn't know what the board's opinion, if they wanted to expand the sale of the water. Uh, we do have a pipe out back that we could put meters on. Uh, we do have still have the meter out at the other garage. So, I mean, it could still leave access to that one. Uh, we did look at different types of meters, what we could do, like, like electronic ones where you could somehow log in and read the meters and uh, Christy went into all that with all the meter guy but I didn't I don't think that was it, it sounds sounded expensive yeah he had a couple suggestions he said they don't really have anything specific like we were saying if there's one meter could multiple people go in and do like a something like a, a gas car or do, something. Yeah, yeah something like that he said unfortunately no he kind of went around with a few ideas but the one idea he thought would work the best sounds pretty pricey it sounded like there would be a camera hooked to the meter it would be linked together but you had to pay like an annual contract for it and i said well we're seasonal it's only six months typically mm -hmm. around that and he was going to look into it a little more unfortunately i didn't hear back from him today but in talking with him and then with fran it sounds like it's i think we could go honor system kind of like if we had Certain groups go to leisure, certain groups come here. I mean, we could still do the camera, you know, but not through Thai sales, you know what I mean? Expensive thing through them. We could go more, I don't know, something well, just easier for us for off hours if they come in on a Saturday and we don't know. But 
yeah. writing a slip. The meter started at this, ended at this, put it in there. If we find a conflict, we pull up the camera. Well, hey, we guys, just shut here. everybody off. Yeah. That, I don't know. Have them sign something that says, I agree that my employees will fill out a slip. And if we do start to find any conflict, we got the camera for backup yeah. if we need it. Because the, the meat is going to have a, a gallon on it. You take down the gallon. Yeah, every and... every day. You know, we'll come in on Monday if they're here on the weekends. We'll grab the slips. We'll yep. go out. We'll pull the slips. If there's something that looks weird, we'll look at this. You know, when we leave on a Friday, we can look at the numbers. The guys are on call on weekends, too, so they can always kind of check in. But they, it should be very simple. You look at the slip at start reading and reading. This guy's... Yep. Start reading is that one. So yep. if, if there's something wrong, yeah. it, boom, it's clear. Yeah. It's gonna be easy to see. So yep. it's, not, it's not gonna be a, it's not gonna be difficult. And I don't think it's gonna be a whole lot of no people usage. coming in. No. So. I'd still like to see some sort of video backup, but I don't think we have to hire a system. No, that's to do not, it. Yeah, because right. I mean, with can, that comes a whole contract. He yeah. said. I mean, we can yeah. put a camera right up on the side. Yeah. I mean, camera worked out great. We we have them over on Leisure App. Yep. Got some kids breaking the windows. So. Yeah. So it worked out good. Yeah, if you guys can come up with a system, yeah. then I, I have no problem. If we start getting into excessive amounts, like a lot larger amounts than we have in the in the past, then we I think we should just you know make sure that we're all we're in line with okay. our withdrawal permits and so forth. We got plenty of water, right? Did yeah, you? the water's fine. Just the, the the things are moderate drought. I think it's a tier one drought right now, so water restrictions are going to be happening like immediately so yep. it's just the base level restrictions the, the state came on new kind of restrictions where the watering is not going to be like landscapers want to see yeah uh, it's going to be down to watering outside one day a week with your hand hand hose no automatic irrigation none of that so i mean it's getting very very strict uh, i mean they haven't got to that yet but i mean there's different stages of it and last year when it was dry our maximum stage was you can't water between nine and five, but you could water every day at, at night. At night. Well, that's that's going to change. So, any any restrictions that we have will be posted on our website. Correct. And the Facebook. And our page. Facebook page. Yeah. When they do come down, and uh, any restrictions we we have to enforce are from DEP, not anything that we come up with as a board or as a district. Streamflow. Yep. Streamflows and pepper. Yep. yep. Um, anything else on that? Nope. Nope. Was that? Okay. Um, uh, why don't we go to our 410 appointment? Our mm -hmm. four, yep, the meeting with, uh, Mr. O'Brien and Arrow Estates. What can we do for you, sir? Good afternoon. My name is Kevin O'Brien, as I'm sure everyone in this room knows. Um, this is the same three questions. Project out on Howard Street, or my house out on Howard Street. Can you allow me to bring a water main to 318 Howard Street and supply water to my house that's out there at my sole cost? Then, the second question is, can you allow me to take water from that house at 318 Howard Street and bring it to the property line where the 500-foot boundary is off the center line of Howard Street? Then the third question is, can you sell me water off of the property? So just, just against our regular rules and regulation, regulations, the uh, water main must be in front of the property being serviced. So we don't do any kind of cross-lot things. So I'm not sure we have 318 and 319. Right, is, but right. We don't do go any cross-country. But you can't go through 318's lot to get to 390. Right. So we continue it up 318 from 318 Howard Street. Another, the house next door is 384 Howard Street. We go by that. 390 is the road going into the subdivision. That's what the property address is right now. Right. So but we bring it up in the road, proposed, well, not proposed road, the road that is approved uh, to be installed. I can put it 500 feet in the road so it's in a right of way so it can be on in an easement. I think the big question is number three. Well, I think it's three and three and two, pretty mm -hmm. much, uh, because your intent is to service outside the district boundaries. Number three is absolutely. Yeah, which which um, the rate pay is. Well, well, we've spoken. 
You mean we are, we are not bound to serve outside the we can't serve outside the district. No. So, if your intent is to get the water line up there to serve outside the district, you know, then, this, this then is I, I don't think it's something. This is getting pretty confusing. I mean, we're talking about a whole bunch of different things here. Talking about running the water line up to 318, I guess. Now we're talking about running the water line outside the district, which we're not going to do, as far as I'm concerned. That's that's my vote because we can't do that, and I, I'm not going to do that. Um, and there's a lot of other questions that I'd like to ask, but I don't know if I can. Um, well, um, any any time anybody wants to take water, there's normally amounts, right, Fran? We talk about amounts and the use and the end goal. Uh, yes. Well, like the, the greenhouses, yes. Right. We withdraw they need them. to know how much yes. we're going to do it. But we don't know what the end goal here is. Right. Well, uh, we, I, I think we can surmise what the end goal is, but we're, we're not inclined to approve the end goal. I can tell you exactly what the end goal is. It's to supply water to that subdivision. If it, if it requires that you say yes to this, and then you go to this one and you say, yes, we can do that too. Then you go to this one you say, we cannot go on that property and I have to stop my own water department or my own company to take care of it. Can you sell my water to that company? Outside the district. Outside the district, and I'm responsible for it. Though my company or my water, my water department would be responsible for it. And the, one of my concerns was that we're going to end up putting in three miles of pipeline um, a pump station, a tank that eventually we're going to own. Yeah, yeah. I believe you eventually own it. Yes. Yeah. And the problem with that is, is uh, we're going to have to hire additional help. Twenty years, the tank's going to come up to be painted. We got maintenance on the pump station, the electricity to run it, with very little revenue. Well, it seems like the end goal regardless, is to feed the subdivision outside the district boundaries. And I think we've really come to that conclusion. And therefore, I, uh, I don't think that this is something that we should pursue any further. I don't know if that's going to happen. Is, is that... Uh, um... Richard, is that right to say that it seems like the end goal is feeding the subdivision, which we've already discussed that we're not going to do because it's outside the district. Well, I mean, uh, Mr. O'Brien has just, th that was kind of a smoke and mirrors kind of question that was lurking in them. I mean, John is right. That there were really several issues buried in, into this here. And, and one is that, uh, so Mr. O'Brien is saying, number one, he, he would want you to allow him to bring the main up at his expense. So... In that case, who's bringing the main up, okay? First of all, if you're going to run a water main from its present terminus down, I understand it's around Beale Street, three miles up the road, clearly that's something that the water district is interested in because why would you put a water main in those streets if it wasn't going to be, and, and Mr. O'Brien is saying, ultimately it would, would be under the control of the district. He simply happens to be the one financing the installation. So, it, but it's not, at the same time, it's not as though the water district is the sole controller of that process of bringing the main up. There are several players, Town of Unenberg, for one. So, there you have an iffy kind of a question, and what I would be telling the district is, if the water main is going to come up there, you certainly, I would think, and the three of you plus Francis know more about this than I do, really, in terms of technical water issues, but I am sure you'd be interested in, you know, being on top of all of the details of exactly how is that water main extension going to go. There, there are a lot of secondary issues, of, you know, technical issues just about installing a water main that you're interested in, especially if you're going to own the thing. So that's one thing. So when, when the question is allow him to bring it up, to me, the, the, the real question is, what you be, are you be, you're being asked to sort of partner in this endeavor. Mr. O'Brien Mr. wants to bring it up to 
facilitate getting water into a subdivision, you'd have a different perspective on it, and there'd be a long-range one. You'd own the thing forever. Okay, so that's number one. And the question is, it's a tough one to answer, can you commit to this in, in those terms, that, namely that you'd be partnering and what's the word I want, sponsoring, if you want, the extension of the main. It's an important question, and I think what you're saying here is correct. You, you, the question is, what's, what's at the end of the thing? Where is this going? What's it going to look like when it's said and done, because you're interested in that? Then the second thing is, well, you know, let's say it gets up there. Well, certainly you, it, once the the main gets up there and runs along Howard Street. Now you're in the now it's appropriate to say, I want a meter. You know, I'd like to install a service. And in this case, apparently, the the request would be in it, along that frontage. There are two or three po potential access points. I take it that's what those two addresses are about. And uh, it's one thing to say, well, just put a meter in there. But that then raises this question, who's supplying water to the subdivision? Is it you, and this intermediate meter is just a kind of a way station, or as I just des described it, the, the first meeting after the January special when the, uh, the, uh, you know, the effort to put the subdivision in the district didn't pass, th then Mr. O'Brien asked about the installation of a meter. And I was suggesting at that time, and I, 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 it's still my opinion, you would really have to know what's going to be the whole shape of the thing in, in terms of details at the end. And the way I look at it, and I think this is correct, I, I, I know more about it now than I did before. I think in, at that time I was trying to get in touch with counsel at the DEP in our, in, in our region. And I have spoken to a couple of those people, and although they're not that much interested, DEP, I find, is not that much interested in the question of can some water provider, like a district or a town, provide water outside its jurisdiction? They don't seem to care about that much. I mean, if, if, if the water is going to be provided in that way, they want it to be right, they want the withdrawal permit to be right, whether you can do that or not, they don't seem to care. But I think and it's a question I've asked myself on behalf of the district many times in the past, and that is, can you do that? Can you provide water outside the district? But haven't the rate payers spoken and, well, no, and no. already said that they do not want water sold outside the district? Well, no, I don't think so. <laughs> they, they, they probably think so. Here's what they've said. <coughs> Excuse me. The voters who appeared at that special meeting did not want that subdivision to go into the district because we counted the votes. But it wasn't just those people from well, Howard State. It was it was all our ratepayers. No, it, it was, it was the it, next meeting. It was voters. It was voters that were there in a, in a large number for that kind of a meeting, in my experience. So they didn't want it to go into the district. And at different times, you know, just speaking informally, I'd say people have showed up and said, no, they don't want the district providing water in there, whether it's direct or indirect or whatever. They don't want the district to do it. I'm guessing virtually all of them, if not every single one of them, it has to do with the project or maybe has to do with what's going to happen to the roads and, and you know, this and that. Everybody has their this own. This wall, that tree. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Everybody has annual an issue meeting, about it. Annual meeting was a different vote and we voted not to sell water outside the district. Well, no. You're talking about Article 7? Yes. The meeting I didn't show up at? Yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, that was... Artic Article 7 was... No, that was a non-binding... I suggested that article. It just happened to show up at the time that the annual was coming up. So I suggested that article, and it was simply to give the commissioners an opportunity to put that question to vote whatever voters would show up. It's like taking the pulse of the voters, but it's not legally binding in any way. You can make whatever decision you want as commissioners. You know, you have that authority, and you, you're not bound by that. I, I, honestly, I don't think the district can, can, can tell you how to vote on a discretionary matter, okay? But it was 
an opportunity to sound them out, and my understanding is uh, it was a, uh, an overwhelming vote, you know. The, the question really was, because Mr. O'Brien had showed up at the first commissioner's meeting after that special, and in effect, you know, the way I looked at it, I was present at the meeting, he was saying to the commissioners, okay, so here I am, the thing didn't go, so now can you work with me on this? That was the idea. He was looking for a way to get water into that subdivision. And so the commissioners, as far as I'm concerned, were simply hearing them out. As happens often at these meetings, people come in and say, i got this problem, can you work with me? And so you did sound out the voters, and for what it's worth, they voted that they weren't interested in pursuing that line, if I could put it that way. Mm -hmm. So now coming down to uh, allow water to be sold from the meter pit, if, if somehow the main got up there, could you allow water to be sold into the um, subdivision? My opinion is this. If the, if the, uh, the main made it all the way up there and Mr. O'Brien installed a water meter on his property that's in the district, because the first 500 feet north of Howard Street are in the district, um, and then he would have turned around and supplied that subdivision, his, his effort in that regard would be the definition of a private water supply company, public water company. If there were more than 25 takers, which there would be, based on what I've heard, um, that is under the jurisdiction and regulation of the DEP, public water supplier. And so that's why when Mr. O'Brien first showed up, I, I said if anything were going to be done, that I'd be telling the district that they need to have all the details of what it's going to be. It couldn't be just put a meter pit there and, you know, I'll take it from there. It can't be that. So, that comes down to this question, which I think has just been suggested, and that is, if, if he were to do that and, and create, and I'm saying as a matter of law, he is creating a, a private water company, then the question is, does it make sense for you as a district to install a private water company uh, within the district that's then going to turn around and supply water to a taker outside the district. Can you do that? Well, it, I don't know, really. <laughs> Maybe you can. Because private water companies can sell water wherever they can sell it. It's possible that if they're trying to sell it in the territory that some public supplier, like a town or a city or a district, and, and in effect going into competition with them, business competition, selling water, you might want to do something about that, and you might want to claim that you have the exclusive, uh, you know, franchise for supplying water within that geography. You understand what I'm saying? If if if, the, if you now allow a private water company to be created, and and look, a private water company gets defined. If you're supplying public water, and you're private, that's the that's the definition of it. And if 25 are taking it. It's then under the jurisdiction of the DEP, which they take seriously. Okay. Right, I got a, I got a couple of questions that I've, I've never got the answers to. The first thing is you said sell a private company sell water to another company. Now the water district is the one. If we could, I mean, if, if this all happens, I don't know. We're going to sell water to his subdivision. If this all happens, right? Now, well, look, if it's you selling water to his subdivision, I, just as far as that goes, I don't think you can do it because they're not in the district. I think it's true. No, if he becomes a water company or whatever he wants to think he's going to become, I don't yeah. know. Can, can that happen? We can sell it then or we can't. Could you sell it to his water company? Yes. Oh, I guess you could. Okay. But so should you? Because could we sell you're in the water business there, so why would you be selling water to a company and then... Well, we're still going to get people, paid for the water. You know, there's been something said about, you know, the voters have been heard. So pe people would, I'm assuming, just a political opinion, okay? People would rise up and say, 
You're just getting around the law. You can't sell water outside the district, so you're doing something fancy to get around the law to sell water outside the thing by creating this private water company. Maybe you are, but the question is, can you do that? Well, maybe that's, that's, that's a legal question. We have to have the answer to it. Well, I think maybe you could. I don't know. All right, so when that, that case hasn't been litigated. So, okay. so I think the district boundaries were made for some reason, correct? Yeah. I mean, if not, the water district would have the same boundaries as the town. No, I mean, you have, it, it's a form of municipal boundaries. It's just that you only do one thing. Most municipalities do a million things. You only do one thing. You provide water. And you have boundaries, and in that sense, the analogy to a town is very close. It doesn't happen to be town-wide. So... We don't currently sell any water outside the district, other than what we do here with people taking do it from we? here, which is smaller amounts. Is right. there a, like a pool? The pool, pool people coming in to fill up their tanker trucks, so which you, could be delivered to Little Bird. We don't. But did, did, did there used to be a thing around Baker Station where we used to provide them? Was there something going on over there? Like they were in Fitchburg or something, or any odd situation uh, like that? No, nope. that was Lemons the Water feeding water in Lunarburg. Oh. And now Fitchburg actually feeds the town of Lunarburg water department. Right. Those oh, are municipality, right. municipalities with agreements. You know, there used to be, there was a case, this is not the same case, but some years ago there was a case where Lemonster had been supplying water in a part of Lunenburg, which ultimately became part of the district, but went way right. before the district it was ever before existed. The district. Correct. And then that system, because it was old and decrepit, and the city of Lemonster wasn't paying attention to it because it was outside the city, and so, you know, the pipes were, you know, eight inch pipes were down to a half inch and, and all this kind of a yeah. thing, and you couldn't put any pressure in there because they would blow up. And that ended up in litigation. Right. Um, so, but, but, but that would have been a case where the city of Lemonster was providing water inside the Lunenburg Water District, which you wouldn't think that would happen, but that's because it was a pre-existing situation, went back to the 19th century. And uh, so when the Lunenburg Water District came in, and that just kept on going. People were paying their rates to Lemonster, and it was just ignored. I mean, we, we got sucked into it because when, when it started going bad, people were looking to the water district to step in and pick it up, but the minister wasn't interested. And the water district couldn't work with, you know, you couldn't have just connected the systems. That's what happened there. So that was a different issue. But the issue I'm talking about, which I think is implied by number three here, is can you put a private water company, which, you know, would be in some sense a competitor of yours in the sense that it's selling water and you're selling water, but you're selling to them, and then they're turning around and selling it outside the district, but to adjoining property. Can you do that legally? <clears throat> isn't the water going it, outside the district? Lunenburg district no, no, water going it, outside you know, the but, district? Uh, yeah, but Lunenburg water goes outside the district. We, uh, I, you know, people come and fill tank trucks and fill swimming pools somewhere. So some water is exported, but that's a different story. Right, that's a different... But, but in this case, there, there is no question, and Mr. O'Brien has clarified it here today, there is no question that the overall purpose is to take Lunenburg Water District water and get it into that subdivision by creating some intermediate landing place for the water all of which could be done legally uh, in the sense that, as I said, it would be, then become a private water company if it were put together the way it's been described. DEP would be involved. And then the water district would be looking at a different situation and being asked, do they want to go along with that? So I, I have and, one question. And, and just let me say that. That's what the question would be. Right. So you want that situation, and the question's being asked, and the water main hasn't left Beale Street yet. That's the point. Okay. It's all in the offing. Right. There is nothing in our articles of organization or at the state level that requires us to sell water outside the district? Uh, no. 
Okay. You know, and, and look, you can read the Enabling Act. Right. And uh, try to find in there the basis for getting into agreements that might allow you to do things. But okay. we're not required to get into agreements. No. Okay. The, whether or not you get so, into agreements that are being proposed is discretionary. So I would propose as a, an elected official that the non-binding, even though it was non-binding, question was the people that elected us advising us on their opinion of trying to move forward and negotiate and work with to sell water outside the district that was shot that that was overwhelmingly denied at uh, at our meeting so I would say that this is this issue at this point uh, is flatline yeah, I mean, you're entitled to do that. You know, you're an elected commissioner, as are these two guys, and you're being asked to make. A, a, look, when you, as a commissioner, you know, you read you read that enabling act, and, and except for a few specific things that aren't applicable here, it, it specifically says the district is under the complete control and direction of the uh, commissioners. Subject to instructions provided by the voters, but without getting into that, there's no point in getting into that now. There are some things the voters could instruct you on, and there are other things that they can't. Okay, that's a whole body of law. But what I would say about this is, I mean, the whole point is, you as a, a, a board of commissioners right now, I, I don't want to be putting words in Mr. O'Brien's mouth, but it appears he's asking you, to make a commitment to something that is very much in the offing and there are several events that would have to take place before you really got down to the question of whether you're really going to do this and supply water. That would be when the main is coming by Howard Street. Now, now there's something on the table that you can act upon and the superintendent can send his crew out with the truck. Okay? And so when, when you're being asked to make a commitment by somebody who has a long-range plan, if you and, you and the board want to, you know, take a position on it, okay, you can't be <coughs> controlled about what discretionary judgment you apply to making that decision. So, for example, if you look at the vote under Article 7 of the annual, as the, enough voters that, that cared enough to show up at the meeting voted almost almost unanimous, unanimously, as I understand it, not to pursue that line. So you, you could very understandably take that as your cue. But on the other hand, if you felt differently as a commissioner, you could go differently. You could say, well, I, I understand how they're saying, but I think it's in the best interest of the district, as I see it, to think about it this other way. You understand we that? should vote on it. All right, I got I got something first. I want to I want to say, um, yeah. this is all hypothetical, of course. Um, you know, if the water line, twelve inch water line goes up to three eighteen Howard Street, it's going to be a pump station. There's going to be a water tank. Now, for some reason, uh, that project in the back never comes about. We're stuck with a pump station and a water tank that's going to need maintenance for forever. The electric bill for just the pump station is going to be $5,000 a month, give or take. And for some reason, if you decide not to put a water tank up there, then you're going to put a pump in there that's going to run 24 hours a day to keep the pressure up for that few houses you're going to put on Howard Street. As far as I'm concerned, if that what happens, the water district is going to lose money every single month on those houses and on that water main. And we're not in the business to lose money. So I've got to really have uh, some more information about how much water is going up there. Um, if maybe there's going to be a water company up there or if not, 
I mean, we, nobody knows here now if there's going to be a water company. Uh, but as of right now, I mean, the water district will lose their shirt up there for the next 50 years. We won't even cover the cost, the expense. And when the main starts breaking down and things have got to be done, hydrants have got to be changed and, and this and that, leaks fixed and everything, it's not a feasible project for the water district as it sits right now. Well, I certainly wouldn't put the, spend the money on putting a three miles of water main in without doing the project. So, um, I understand what you're saying as far as, you know, it's a responsibility of your department. Um, but that would, certainly the project would be built. Well, that's, that's my... The water to be used. Can, can I ask a question? Sure. sure. Okay, so, uh, inter-municipal agreement, the commissioners have the authority to do that on their own. So if we sold water to Fitchburg, Lumbus, or Lancaster, or whatever, they, they could set up that agreement themselves. But if they sold water to a water company, the commissioners don't have that authority. They, they have to be a district vote. Okay, so for it to get to the district vote, then that whole water main would have to be in and everything all installed to get to the point where we decided if it goes outside the district. So that's so, I mean... You, you we, all, we, we pretty much had a vote. Right, that would, I do, that I would agree. show what would happen if we tried if we tried to do that. That's that's what I agree. So I mean, if all the water main went in, he paid all that money, and then it's going to come to a vote, and then it's going to happen, and we know what the vote's going to be. Right. And uh, then it's going to die then, and then all the expenses. And then, that you then just everything said, he's talking to about. Us. Right. Right. And, and the other thing too is you said something about um, I'm trying to remember what was oh if the water for some reason went out to his project, we would be in competition with each other. Selling water now. I don't know how that could be because we're going to sell water to him at a, let's say wholesale. He's going to turn around and sell it to his people in the project retail. I don't care what he gets for the water once it goes, you know, past the meter. And is he going to be responsible for all the infrastructure from that water meter out to his project? Can I comment on that? Sure. In general. You, Here's a very general comment. If, and this has had actually happened in the past. For example, there was the episode not that long ago, and the issue was about <coughs> supplying water in Lancaster or along Route 70. And so whatever the Enabling Act had to say about that, um, my advice at the time to the district was, if you're going to do something out of the ordinary of that nature, Rather than, you know, try to analyze the thing legally and come up with some kind of uh, rationale that would allow it, my advice would be, and it was in that case, to, you know, use the old method of you get together with the estate senator or representative and you, you develop some kind of an amendment to the Enabling Act, which we've done over the years for a number of reasons, different times, and you then build it into your enablement specifically so that there isn't any question as to whether you have the authority to be doing this or that. Now in this case I was I have said today that if with the subdivision not being in the district if the perp, if the uh, approach was going to be to supply water at a meter that's in the district on the Arrow Estates property which is in the district that first 500 feet um, but I, I'm telling you, that entity receiving that water and sending it out there would be a public water company, all right? But it would under be the his. Uh, under the direction of the uh, the uh, supervision of the DEP. But it, that's what it would be because there it is, it's working, and that's the definition of a, a water company. But if you were actually going to do it, I'd be telling you that you should, and it's the reason I said to Mr. O'Brien back at the first meeting after the January special, the district would have to know exactly what the details of the arrangement were going to be. And I haven't seen them yet, but after I saw them, I suspect I'd be telling you, you need to um, amend the Enabling Act in a way that addresses this squarely so that you don't have any question about whether you have the authority to be doing this and right up front, 
you'd be doing what I just said in far too many words, uh, is sizing up something that happen hasn't happened yet and committing yourself to supporting it. But at least you would want to know exactly what it was, and if you wanted to get behind it, and you know, you look at the details of it, and then, then it would be a question of doing something legislatively that addressed the thing clearly and, an, and enabled it to happen. So legislative action would require a vote of the district to yes. authorize that. Yes, that's part of it. That's my question. Right. And in, and in the past, those things have been pro forma. Mo most of the time when we have you know, done a special act to achieve some purpose, it was thought through in advance, defined, you write it up. Uh, a, f a few times we've availed ourselves of either the House or Senate uh, legal departments because they're very, you know, good at the technicality of those kinds of things and, and they help you draft the act. It's a specialization. And so that's what we'd probably be doing. So <laughs> to simplify this, yeah. <laughs> we have this much information right now. We need this much information to even start to consider this thing. Correct? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess. It, uh, to me, the real problem is, I'm saying that the, the main hasn't left Beale Street yet. And so there's a, I'd say Mr. O'Brien in his position is between a rock and a hard place because I'm sure he doesn't want to bring the water main three miles up the road and then find out, uh-oh, it can't work. It certainly can't be that he's going to bring it three miles up the road to serve that one meter and manage to get a house or two, you know, on Howard Street there. And so there has to be an overall shape to the thing before you, you and presumably, you know, his company would make the decision to commit to this. You'd have to have it all planned out and set up in advance and, you know, many steps to take. What if... Mr. O'Brien, for some reason. Now, we, the legislation, has we have to do that, or he has to do that? Well, I mean, uh, if, if, well, I mean who if, if the that? district would, it, it would be a kind of, it wouldn't be a technical legal partnership, okay. but as a practical matter, there'd be a working partnership there, and you'd have your part. I mean, look, the district is interested in the the main coming three miles up the road all along the whole thing for are which you? there are all kinds of consequences. Are you well, interested? You know what I mean? I, I don't mean interested in that yeah. you want to have it, or that, but if it were going to happen, if you knew it was going to happen, you certainly would be interested in it and you'd be trying to think about the consequences of it for the whole three miles. We've talked about the costs and I, I mean I don't think we're totally on board with because I think first of all yeah. a lot of those people on on um, Howard Street, I think just to spite us to allow that water line would go in, if their water went, I think they'd put a well in. Very possibly. Just to spite and, us. And the point is, though, but so you're concerned about all that. Yeah. Yeah. But so what's I assume Mr. O'Brien, he's not worried about that. He's worried about his no. subdivision and getting the water up there. You can worry about the three miles. And I'm more legit. worried about... I mean, this because you have different... A different point of view about it than he does. Well, I'm worried about the way the ratepayers have expressed their opinion well, on it. It's, uh, what, if he, what, what if he went wherever he has to go and, and developed himself a water company and came back to us and said, I got a water company now? I mean, I don't know if that's even possible, if that has to be, be done, if you can do that before or be done after. I, I, I'm all concerned here about this whole thing being legal and being. I still right think it comes down to number three. No, but, well, but you it, see, it probably you, you does. Know, look, the question is this. Suppose that subdivision weren't there. Yeah. Suppose it was some other part of town where there's a boundary of the district that's still in Lunenburg. And somebody came up and said, I want to set up a private water company to be in competition with you. I want to supply water over here because they're not in the district. What would you say? Go no. ahead. You would? They're outside no. the district. What else can you do? They're well, outside the district. Right, but, no, we, know, we, no, but we control the water supply no, but, uh, within the district boundaries. Look, if somebody comes in and says, "We're going to, I'm going to provide a 
I'm going to create a public water company to supply water in competition with you to people who aren't in the district. I, I would yeah, think you'd say, do we want that? If a guy wants to run a water main down Mass Ave, so oh, water at half the rate, then we charge. Oh, we wouldn't let him yeah, do but that. We wouldn't exactly where he's going. Yeah, but hypothetically, right, the cost would kill the guy. He'd never get off the ground. Uh, okay. No, you but I'm saying, do you want to create people that are in the same business you're in, working inside your district I, I and getting I understand. water so they can sell it in cost? I understand where you are. I'm not talking about in the district. I'm, yeah. You said outside no, the district. No, but in Lunenburg. Oh well, okay. That, that would you would you say no, that's not a problem? You know, we don't. Yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with it. We don't want well, that's free enterprise, isn't it? I mean, I, I I would be against it, but could you actually stop the guy if he found a water supply down the street and look? Yeah, but that 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 seems like a different scenario. We seem to be going a little yeah, sideways. There's a, there's a well, difference between so, people being water takers, yeah. whether it's a business or an industry or a well, private, you know, question. homes. I know. And somebody getting right into now. the water business. In competition with you, except they buy your water to someone. Harley, well, I guess. Oh, hold on, one. Yep. Uh, we do have some public comment, so are we put that to rest? To rest? Are we good with that? No, I still got some questions. Yeah, okay. Do it. Uh, Why don't we take a break? We'll take a little bit of public comment, and then we'll get back into our okay. discussion. All right. Miss Bertram. It's very clear to me in reading the acts that created the water district that a change in the uh, in the enabling act would be required to sell water outside of the district via a public company, as was just stated by council. Any change in the enabling acts requires a vote of the members of the water district. It's very, very clear that members of the water district would not support such a change in the enabling act. So even if you go down this path of engineering and getting into agreements and spending all kinds of money on legal fees, at the end of the day, the voters have the say. They've spoken twice now. It's extremely clear they do not support this. So this is, you're talking in circles, quite frankly. The voters have the final say at the end of the day, because it will require a change in the enabling acts, in my opinion. Additionally, when you talk about extending a water main, Mr. Esposito is exactly right. You would have to do a cost-benefit analysis. You'd have to know exactly what you're going to be serving, what that cost is going to be, what your rate of return is, and what your costs are over the course of the lifetime of the line. So, and you would do that, I would assume, for any taker. Um, if someone comes in and says, I want to extend a main, you would do a cost-benefit analysis. Does this make sense for the district or does it not? And if he's going to run a three-mile main to service a couple of houses, it doesn't make sense from the district standpoint. So, and if he's going to create a public entity in order to sell water outside of the district, that will require a change in the, in the enabling acts. And the voters don't support that. So you will go down and, and spend a lot of money to pursue a, a path that's going to be closed to you. So I'm not sure why we keep talking about this, quite frankly. What did we do? Thank you, Ms. Bertram. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Chairman, the, the issue here is pretty crystal clear to me. And that is, this is a, a, a proposed way to circumvent the uh, wishes of the district. Okay? Clearly, the three commissioners have it in their purview and their responsibilities and their rights to make a decision. And I would urge you to do that, rather than go on and, and do any more. I mean, it's, the people have spoken. And, and I, I think you understand, you know, what their intent is. Make a decision. Thank you, Mr. Rogers. Um, sure. Um, I will be brief because there's a little redundancy. One thing is um, the project Hello? circumvents the purpose of the entire structure of the district and its bylaws. And so then my mind says, why have rule and order? if it does not apply. Um, and another thing I have brought up before is you see this in other projects um, like cleaning drainage basements at a big development. There comes a point 10, 15 years later the developer's gone and there's structures that were supposed to be cared for. Well, to me, water is the most essential utility that is going to these homes and I just have a hard time understanding if I were a homeowner there, am I in an association? What's protecting me from my water? I can turn to you for my water. And so I'm thinking of these future residents of the town 
who do they turn to for their water issues, their water rates, their water problems? They are, in my opinion, and that's something I would say from a town perspective, in some type of risk that the rest of us are not in, getting their water this way. I'm not comfortable, I would not be comfortable owning a home like that, not understanding my water utility. And with that being a concern, do we have an example of this occurring anywhere? Anywhere in our state? Anywhere. Because I wouldn't even consider setting this scenario up unless we could see a successful example of it anywhere in the state, anywhere in the country. The people break their water district rules like this, and if they do, has it succeeded? And could we learn how it could have failed? Um, I think without an example, I would, would find this a very alarming project to continue on. I think there is a very close example to that project, which is Brook. The water oh. company was within the Towns and Water District? Uh, that's a town department, so right. they, they didn't have a okay. district boundary. Okay. Uh, the town of Townsend would not supply that development. Luckily, he found a huge capacity well. He created his own water company, which was right. the which, which is So the th it's, it's been done. It's, it's been done successfully. It's under the, the blanket of DEP because he'd be a private, it would be a private water company. So that end of the thing, it's... That's but but that that has that th yeah, those no, things that's putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, it's not the same. It's yes. not right. the same thing. If, if he if he found his own well, he right. created his own public. Right. His own. Yeah, he, he can do that. that. But, he can do that. But, but that's yep. not what this but is. But this is not right. what that is. Right. So right. Just to wrap up um, my comment, one, I always get concerned about setting a precedent. So once you say yes to one sort of rogue situation. The next time somebody comes with something similar, how do you say no? You've set the legal precedent that you're saying yes, and the sky could be the limit. And I always worry about precedent setting. And then the uh, last thing I'll say is about um, amending um, the enabling acts so that it works. It's simply saying change the rules so it works. And under the current rules, it doesn't. But the voters have to approve that, and it's clear they're not okay. correct. All right. Are we good with public comment? And Ms. Mr. O'Brien, you had a, a <coughs> comment? Yeah, I got a question. Take my stuff off the table for a minute. Mr. Lani, uh, Lani and Wichits comes in yep. and says, I want to drag a water main down my down the road for my property. Because he wants to stop, you know, doing stuff and you know, get something closer to the world. Um, you're gonna deny him doing that or does he it, have to it do it? I don't I, I take that back, it's right now. Does he have to do a cost analysis, which is what everyone seems to be worried about? Does Ms. Polani have to do a cost analysis and say, I'm going to be able to do this, or I'm not going to be able to do this? Does he have to prove that he's going to be able to spend $200,000 or $300,000 to bring the water main to his property? Does he have to prove that? Unrelated hypothetical. I, I, I think he's, he's I, in the he's I think in that's the, an he's apple and oranges. Apple, I think it's apples and oranges because... You know, um, we're not talking about uh, a major expansion of our infrastructure. And he would have to come to us and he would have to ask uh, for the water expansion. He would have to give us the amount, the, the, the amount of water that he was going to use and what he was going to use it for. for con and then we have to take that into consideration. And he's in the district. And, and his line would be a basic extension of the water main, no, no other... Yeah, Pump there's no pumps, there's no, no, nothing else. Yes. Mr. Chairman, you? you know, I, I, I remind you of this. Um, the early history of the water district, um, I, I don't think much happened after 1939. There was a lot of uh, scrabbling around to kind of get in position to provide water. I wasn't born back then. No, I know, but I, I'm, I'm telling them. The... The point is that the early expansion of the water district, including the infrastructure, really consisted of, um, I don't know, I, I wasn't born back then either, but, but pretty close. <laughs> but but uh, the, the point is that the water district expanded when the district got together with people that wanted water extended to where they were, typically subdivisions. Um, I can think of a few specifically that I happen to know about. And groups of people, typically in a neighborhood, would get together, approach the commissioners, they'd work something out, and they're actually, I, if I went digging into my storage, I'd find there was actually a template agreement that people in neighborhoods would get into 
you know, promising to cooperate with the, the district and the district would do its part and, and the mains would be put in to a certain extent and people would contribute funds to do that, there'd be like a... Uh, betterment. It was like a betterment, but no betterments were assessed. They'd come together on an agreement, we'll pay this, you pay that, and the thing would expand. That's, that was the history of it. Um, the difference in this case is um, the idea of running the main three more miles north, that didn't start here with the district. That, this history that I'm referring to, you could say the commissioners were always ready to talk to people and they had sort of tentative ideas. We could go here, we could go there, and when people would come in with the idea, they'd implement it. They had thought a lot of this stuff through. Um, in this case, however, the idea of running the main three miles north isn't coming from the district, it's coming from a private owner. But if you decide that's going to happen, it does have implications for the district, which some of these people have alluded to, that you really have to think through. Right. Okay, so it's a question of whose idea was this. Do we, and, have, do we have any other, I want to wrap this up, yeah. do we yep. have any other discussion amongst the commission regarding this, or do we have any motions from any of the commissioners regarding um, this? Can I, I make a motion? Um, to vote on the three questions proposed by Mr. O'Brien? Um, I think it's probably be one question. Um, do, you know, do we want to continue to the, dis the, the discussion of the expansion of the water line from Beale Street um, as we've been discussing? Are we talking about to his land on Howard Street. Any expansion, do we as a board want to consider any expansion of the water system as it sits today so with, that, the, with the end purpose being to feed outside the district? I, I'm, I'm, not going, I'm opposed to that right now, and I'll tell you why. About what I brought up about bringing a water main up there, a 12 inch, a pump station that, as far as we know right now, we talked about it going in a tank, I don't know, half a million gallon tank, uh, that going in. And if that's what we're going to vote on now, I want to know if there's a shortfall between what it's going to cost and us and what we're going to take in in revenue, who's going to make the shortfall up and how. The water district as, is not as, going to as pay. It, as it sits right now, do you support further discussion on Well, I'd like to this? find out. I'd like to find out if it goes in like I just said. I want to know who and how the shortfall is going to come. So the water district, if there is a shortfall and it is made up, the water district is not going to make one cent on that whole project because we're just going to cover our costs. And what about the costs in the future? Who's going to pay in the future a million dollars to have that pump, I mean, to have that tank painted? Who's going to pay the $5,000 a month electric bill uh, and all the maintenance? But if, if you're not going to do any consideration with extending it, none of that matters. So right. I think the board needs to decide. Are you going, right. going to go through all that or are you going to say, no, this is, this is done? So we, we should vote on the three questions. Or you can vote on the last number three if you wanted to and say we're not going to sell outside the district. Or, well, I, I don't or know, you are, so I, I don't. Yeah, I think don't understand that. If, well, if, if, if we're going to vote, then let them do it. Well, you're not. I don't think that's the vote. I think. What are we uh, voting on? Council, what is the appropriate motion to be made <laughs> well, in this? I, well, I've already talked too much. I think <laughs> you, the position you have to take. These things are all conceptual. They're just concepts. None of them have any detail in them, and so how can you uh, how can you vote to do something when you don't really know what it is? It's just concepts. So what would you actually be doing? Well, I, I suppose you'd have to be voting on a specific plan that had detail in it, and then the question would be whether you would want to collaborate, I guess, with Mr. O'Brien's outfit to do it. 
I, and I, what, what I said at the first meeting after the special was there simply wasn't enough detail for the commissioners to meaningfully vote other than just to talk to uh, the person that was sitting in front of them about it. Because the whole thing was about investigating a way that you could solve his problem. So we could have a vote and it wouldn't mean anything. Well, I mean, as you say, it depends on what you vote on, but... Well, that's the just it. <laughs> I'd, really I'd like to ask Mr. O'Brien a question. Kevin, if we vote on number three, not to allow water to be sold outside the district, does number one and two have very any meaning to you? No. Okay. So basically, okay. number three is the key question. Perfect. Okay. But I would, I would, I would appreciate getting the answers to one and two. Yeah. Just well, I'd like to make a motion whether the district will allow water to be sold from the water meter pit in the water district to the property outside the district. I would like to amend that motion to, well, let's go with three, and then we can talk about one and two. Okay. Look, excuse me, I don't want to, you're the commissioners, I'm not, but I, you're not allowing anything. The water main isn't anywhere near that property, so how can you, I asked, the, your superintendent about this. Have you put meters in in front of properties that aren't on the water line? No. It, Why would you? It doesn't even say where, where it's going, Look, though, Richard. Outside the district. The it could be over gonna, here. It if could you're going to make a motion, if you're going to make a motion about any of this, the most it could be would be whether or not you support the endeavor. Because if it's number one, what you take a vote. To begin extending the water main three miles north for what? Well, we'll Under what on circumstances? That one what would be the details? Okay, and then then if if the applicant came in with detailed engineered plans, I guess then the political question would come up, where you'd be back and back to the issue of the voters are against it. But what I'm telling you is, you really don't have any business voting on anything. Uh, that isn't concrete, unless it's just a vote to, you know, continue to collaborate with the individual to see if you can solve his problem, or maybe the vote is to, you know, not to continue until further detailed information is provided, not to say that you want to... What if we well, made a motion... ...to spend a lot of money for nothing, because it may be true that maybe the political situation is impossible. But I don't think you're in a position to vote on something binding at this point. I don't think I'm looking for anything binding. I'm not, I can actually tell you I'm not looking for anything binding. My problem I'm is this, this is a conceptual idea, okay. and I'm looking to have the board look at it and say, okay. "Look, we don't want three miles of water mains." I mean, does it make sense from from some standpoints to have three miles of water go out there and have the hydrants and have fire protection? Yes. Um, do people feel like they're gonna roads are gonna be destroyed and that would all be taken care of as part of the you know, bonding and all the stuff that I have to do with it. Um, again, if it's if it's a I know it's an uphill battle, but if it's if it's not something you wanna do, you have to tell me that. Yeah, it puts us in a bad spot. I, I, with I, with I, our rate payers. You know. I mean nothing against you, it's just that, you know, they spoken and I think as uh, commissioners, we have to answer to them. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd kind of like to vote on it tonight and put this thing, you know, one way or the other, put it to bed. All right. Because we've talked way too you. much on it. I'll suggest a motion for you. Okay. Okay. You can get a copy of that to insert it in your, in your motion. I won't read the thing right now. And you can move... Uh, Resolved. It would be a resolution on the part of the board that the board of commissioners does not support pursuing these objectives, as are expressed here, as presented by Mr. O'Brien. If if the end the end result would be the provision of the waters of the Lunenburg Water District to the subdivision property which is not in the district. That if that's the objective, that you don't support pursuing that endeavor. Either that, or how about if we nope. make a motion? I don't like that. 
not to sell water outside the district. No, no, that's no. That's, Who's no, asking that's, you to sell water outside the district? Too, the main isn't broad. anywhere near that property. No, I, I, there's so, got to be a, a simple solution yes, to this. Because, I mean, I think Kevin well, knows that think, well, what we're up against. You, absolutely you, know, you understand what we're up against. Yep. And my, I'm speaking for myself. Um, the people have let my, me know that they do not want to sell water outside the district. And that would be the way that I would vote, would be not to allow it. Did you write Richard's motion down? All right, let's make a yeah, motion to vote on that. it. Okay. No. So Basically using support. The, the, board, the chair would accept a motion as a resolution not to pursue that uh, the not to to pursue selling water outside the the, the extension of the main from Beale Street to 318 Howard not to pursue 318 to feed a property outside the district is there any discussion on the motion? Well, well, actually, can't, I can't make a motion. Can say so moved, if you want. Okay. I would accept that motion. Any so, discussion, John? No, you guys, someone's you gonna to say, say so moved. moved. So moved. Okay. So moved. Okay. Okay, someone's gonna second it. I'll second it. Okay. Any now discussion the on the motion? Basically, we are we are resolving to the fact that this this project is something that with the information provided, we no longer want to uh, Pursue. Pursue it. As it stands right now? As it stands right now. Okay. We clear on that? Yes. Okay. All those in... Any discussions? Any discussion from the public? Everybody. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Vote was unanimous. This is put to bed. Good once and for all. Well, once. <laughs> Thank you. I know these meetings don't normally go. No. <laughs> Two hours and five minutes. They normally go five. Uh, wondering about wondering about our new sign. Uh, we we got to go through the ZBA. When, why is that? Because it exceeds the square footage. Now it's but does not it, bigger. Doesn't, doesn't every sign on the street exceed the it's square not footage? Any bigger than the high school and the fire station? Well, I don't and know the how they did it, but it, it goes by your zoning. We're we're in. Uh, Business. We're business, and that's business yeah. runs down. Is, no, it, no, is no, it business what, to go? What business? We're in. Uh, what about the gas? Do you have business. anything? Um, We're in you can comment business. on that. I, I don't have the sign bylaw in front of okay. me. Okay. Because we know it's more than nine square feet. But you got to. We have to. Commit. We have to go to the ZBA to get. Yes. It so we're in, we're in the limited okay. business district, which is nine square feet, and our sign is much larger. I think whatever Gatsby has doesn't didn't need to go through something. Right. No, it was small enough. So yeah, because his is right. Yeah. Anything bigger than the nine square feet because it's limited business. Has to now, does right. the fire station in the high school get special privileges? What's their zone? Through the stuff. I'm not sure whether they're in a di what district they're in, Mark. I'm not sure. Right. There's, right. So there's limited businesses. Business is just the put the district. Okay. okay. All right. That's All right. my only question. Do we have any now? We have any public comment? I, I do. Yes. A question Ms. on the trucks and the and the you know supplying water for landscapings and pools, etc. My question is, and I think the chair made a, made a, a good point, and I have a question relative to that, is that if you start exceeding what you've done historically, because my concern would be with the, of the water withdrawal and with the addition of the several projects that are going on in Lunenburg, where is that going to put us with our water withdrawal permit? So I'm extremely concerned about Mr. Shore that we don't see an influx of people buying water and bringing it to pools or to landscaping and then exceed our water withdrawal permit. I agree. Yep. And that's that's why I brought that, that point up is that we just need to monitor and see how much more we we are gonna have taken out of the district. So that that's one of my concerns with all these restrictions they're gonna impose. Mm -hmm. If because we, we operate through the revenue generated for the sale of water. So if they restrict how much water we can sell, then it, it's gonna put a financial impact against us. So may, maybe as they do the cutbacks, which is kinda crazy to say you're selling the irrigation companies. But uh, maybe that'll help offset the financial side of things. Too. Where are you with the increase in your water withdrawal permit application? Has that gone been submitted, and where it, is it in the process? It's all submitted. Uh, it was tied to us upgrading uh, one of our wells on Lancaster Ave, and uh, 
the well drilling crews actually just got an email like 10 minutes before the meeting. Uh, we're having a difficult time getting the well guys out there to do the permanent well to do the actual test on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually, just as of 10 minutes ago, uh, we just switched firms. So we're going to have a different well company come in and, and install the so well. So once that's upgrade is complete, most likely the permit would be Yes, approved. everything's there and set, and we just waiting for that final part to, to, to start the process. Okay. But everything's approved for the, uh, the greenhouse. That, that's all the, the uh, extra quantities all approved. So. Right. Thank you. Thank you for letting us participate. Thank you. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second.